Welcome to The Heal Podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gores, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. On today's episode of The Heal Podcast, I interview Dr. Mark Emerson, a world-renowned chronic disease reversal expert who specializes in nutrition-based lifestyle medicine for patients of all ages. His approach supports the body's innate ability to protect and heal itself by promoting healthy lifestyle choices with a focus on evidence-based optimal nutrition, stress management, sleep, and physical activity to treat the underlying lifestyle-related causes of disease. Doc Emerson and I discuss his book, The Healing Protocols, and why more and more doctors are shifting their practices to lifestyle and functional medicine. We discuss why our current allopathic medical model is not allowing for the promotion of health and vitality, but rather chooses to focus on managing symptoms and disease. We also explore why exponentially more people and younger and younger people are getting diagnosed with chronic illnesses like cancer, diabetes, and mental health disorders than just a mere 20 years ago. Doc Emerson reminds us that we have more control over our health than we have been led to believe, and so much more is possible if we understand how to support our innate and incredible capacity for healing. Let's dive in. Dr. Mark Emerson, thanks for coming on the Heal Podcast. Oh, my pleasure. Always great to see you guys. <laughs> you, uh, I first met you in Maui, mm-hmm. Hawaii. Yeah. You're a chiropractor by trade, but now you specialize, you've expanded your practice into nutrition-based lifestyle medicine. Correct, yeah. So kind of talk to us about that and how that kind of evolved from chiropractic to uh, lifestyle medicine. Well, for chiropractic, it was a natural fit to go into something that addresses the chronicity. And I think all physicians, regardless of our training and our degree, uh, there's some frustration that you're, we're not seeing our patients get better, right? We, there's not enough intervention in their lifestyle, right, to get them to actually improve. Or you know, maybe they improve a little bit. But we, my goal is after, you know, I'm 31 years in practice, I really want to resolve a lot of patients' conditions. So when you look at chronic disease, chronic, chronic progressive disease is really premature death. So Say that one more time because that's so good. Okay. So when you look at chronic progressive disease, it's really premature death. Wow. And so, you know, typically people with diabetes type 2 and uh, cardiovascular disease, even autoimmune disorders, they're not 95 and die of these conditions. They die in their 50s, 60s. Um, and, it, and it's sad because these are lifestyle related, which means we can intervene. And that's really how everything came full circle for me in my practice was I really wanted to make a more intervention, right? An interventional approach for patients to take a path of healing. And of course, you know, and heal is a, a classic example of that we, we're going to address diet, stress, you know, mindfulness. And, you know, the names change throughout the years, but the bottom line is, is it's really getting healthy you know, in a mind, body, spirit. And that's what I always tell my patients, especially the new ones coming on and say, look, this program is mind, body, and spirit because we have to get reconnected. Um, allopathic medicine, unfortunately, in drugs, breaks things down into individual issues, right? So you take a medication for this condition and another drug for this condition, and it really, really segments the patient into no answers, right, long term. And you'll notice and a lot of patients will say, well, you know, I'm on this medication, then I had to take this medication for, f- to offset the side effects of this one. Oh. When it, if we really address the actual causation of the chronic progressive disease, then we're going to actually get them better. Most conditions can be resolved totally, but in, even in the least, if they can be improved dramatically, you're changing people's lives. Something like, I mean, it's something like type 2 diabetes mm-hmm. is different than type 1 diabetes. Do you believe, you know, it's, I talk to so many experts and nutritionists and, and, and people that know you can reverse something like type 2 diabetes, mm-hmm. which is, you know, science has shown that it's directly linked to lifestyle and diet. Right. Um, type 1 diabetes is, is genetic. 
is there what what have you been able to do with type one diabetes? Is is, is it are you able to reverse something like that? We, we can improve a lot of the quality of life and uh, the need for as much medication, and so that's really the goal. Um, and and get type ones healthier. Uh, you you got to remember that type two, 90% of diabetes are type twos, and a very small percentage really. 10% or less are type 1. Mm -hmm. And just for the audience, you know, type 1 means the pancreas is not making insulin. So we actually have to give those patients insulin for metabolism. Type 2 is insulin resistant, which means we're making plenty of insulin, but it's not getting into the cell properly, which is all diet and lifestyle. So again, though, when we look at, we may not be able to fire back up the pancreas and get it started if it's been damaged either genetically or early in infancy. There's a lot of different correlations uh, in the studies to show. Regardless, we want to improve their life, right? So again, it's all about lifestyle with type 1s as well, you know. I think being real with patients is, is the most important of saying, look, here's, here's what you got. You probably won't get this fully reversed, so diabetes type 1, or let's say you're missing your left leg, right? So, you know, we're not going to get you a new leg, but we can improve the quality of your life. And that's really what uh, I think once the p patient gets that paradigm, then they have hope. Yes. Right, because really the medication is, is helpful, of course. The insulin is needed, but that's all they get, really. Right? Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of education as to improving their life. Yeah, we could all use education and lifestyle. Absolutely. <laughs> and it helps. You know, and, you know. I, I think that's it. And when you look at the way, you know, uh, Office visits are so fast nowadays, right? So your doctor is, maybe he doesn't have, he or she doesn't have the knowledge or the time, and reimbursement is definitely one of them. They don't, they don't get reimbursed for this, right? So they're not going to spend the time. Uh, but when you have a five-second visit, it's so hard to, or excuse me, five-minute visit, you can't really tell a patient a lot of education in that short time span. Yeah, nor can you find out what's really going on holistically in their whole life picture. Totally. Uh, or history and, you know, emotional and stress and what, you know, what was going on in their life when this, uh, when these symptoms started showing up, etc. to do the proper investigation. Um, a lot of doctors are restrained, constrained in this system, and so their intention is to help, and, and really they only have the time and the tools of, of giving a drug at this stage. Yeah, it really isn't. In, so acute uh, intervention, such as trauma, is, you know, that's where uh, medicine has really cornered the market, right? So if you do, you know, break your leg or you get in a um, gnarly car accident, then acute care is the best in the world, especially here in the United States. They, they've got that down. The problem is, is chronic progressive disease, which happens, you know, it takes 10, 20, 30, 40 years to develop, our, our method still is throwing acute mm -hmm. actions at it, right? So we, we do this medication, which is really more for acute symptomatology, and it's not addressing causation. And that's where patients just continue. So, uh, you know, as the chronic progress, and this is, I just had a patient last week we were talking about, it, and he's telling me all this, and he's kind of, you know, he's kind of new to this uh, way of thinking, right, so to speak, like, you know, meditation and trying to get him to really be balanced and cut the stress and diet and things like that. But, you know, he's been on, you know, he's got diabetes type 2, he's got a cardiovascular, uh, you know, he's got a number of problems, and he's been on those meds for 15 years. And so as he's telling me, he's like, well, I'm not sure if this will work. And I said, well, how's the 15 years been going, right? <laughs> and not to, you know, I didn't want to sound too facetious, but you know, it's, I, you always have to think with patients. I say, look, the definition of an insanity, oh, let me start that again. The definition of an insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And with chronic disease, that's how a lot of our healthcare is, that's what it's doing. It's just throwing one thing after another, but it's the same thing. We never get them off the path of disease and destruction. Yeah, and I'm seeing there's so much to cover because, you know, the gut-brain connection and mental health, and I just talked to Dr. Uma Naidu, um, who wrote This Is Your Brain on Food, and mm -hmm. she's, you know, a Harvard uh, professor, and, you know, she does nu nutritional psychiatry, you mm -hmm. know, and you're doing yeah, nutritional absolutely. lifestyle medicine, and it's it, that's the foundation that is not taught to medical doctors, and it's right. so pivotal. Right. And you likened, you know, and, and this is getting old, but it's just, it's crazy how the standard American diet, and, and you know, pardon me for, for using this as an example, since we have listeners from all over the world, mm -hmm. but... 
unfortunately, a standard America. The Western diet the Western is diet. leaking out into the rest of the world with the spread of things like McDonald's mm -hmm. and other, you know, I don't want to yeah. call out any companies, but with the spread of some of our products from here. Right. And, and you have this great analogy about, you know, hitting your shin into the coffee table. Mm, right. <laughs> and so this is, it's, it's a great picture of, of, you know, chronic illness happens over time and accumulation. And we have these amazing immune systems, but if we're constantly damaging them mm -hmm. or getting in the way with stress and poor diet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sitting at a desk all day or not exercising or whatever all these things are, it accumulates over time. And that's why we get these diseases after 10, 20 years. It's not just, you know, eating one thing of fast food. It's like right. a lifetime of fast food or <clears throat> right. 10 years coupled with stress, coupled. So um, I, maybe you have a different analogy now, but the, tell them the shin Well, the shin one is, is, is good because really, you know, sadly, it, it's still prevalent. I mean, it's... Uh, you know the the shin analogy is a so for instance if you if you get up in the morning you whack your shin on the on the table the the end table you know it hurts really bad and you, you rub it and it's like oh it's real bad and if you need to you could take a, a medication for the pain and it would heal you know leave it left alone it would heal over the next few days but if you every three to four hours got up and whacked your shin into the table in the same spot every day for week after week month after month year after year that wound that simple acute wound Wound, and that's what we're talking about. It started out as an acute wound, now becomes this really chronic pathogenic issue. It's no longer just a, oh, I bumped my head. No my longer leg. just a little bruise. Now it's, it's just like gaping it's, wound. And, and it's systemic. Yeah. So then, you know, this is the funny thing is if we, if we can take that snapshot with patients, and that's why I utilize that one in particular, I think that gives them a snapshot in their mind to go, oh, wait a minute. Because the, the fascinating thing is that you can actually – in one day, start to reverse disease, right? Because every second of every every day, your body's trying to heal. And take a take a, a real inflammatory diet, the Western diet. Let's say we get up and eat breakfast; it's highly inflammatory. You know, we we choke it down, and then our body's just not doing well. It starts the inflammatory response. It starts to catch on fire. And about three four hours later, right when the body has got a control of the wildfire. We go to lunch, and then we do the same thing. High inflammatory foods, processed, processed foods, foods fried GMO foods, foods yeah. all these type of things that, that create a massive insult to our GI system. And the immune system starts over and over. Now, again, that's just one day. We've only covered two meals, yeah. right? So imagine dinner, then we're going to go to the ball game, and then on and on and on and on. Yeah. The problem with chronic disease, I think, for patients is it's slow moving. It's so insidious that we acclimate to not feeling well. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like when you get thrown down a flight of stairs, you know it, right? Yeah. <laughs> the next day you're like, holy cow. But this repetitive every three to four or five hour insult just over time, it's almost like glacial pace. It yeah. just moves Afternoon and moves and fatigue, moves. that's normal. Exactly. And then Waking how do up we... and not wanting to jump out of bed with amazing amounts of energy. We need two cups of coffee. That's right. normalized. So that's normalized. Exactly. And, and it is method of operation. And that's how we get to chronic progressive disease. But you could see, you know, the other term that I, it kind of drives me crazy is the, the anti-aging one, which is somewhat of an oxymoron, right? Because, you know, it's an industry, I get it. But we want to age. I mean, we, we're designed to live a long life. We're designed to, through apoptosis, which is natural cell death, those cells live their life, they die off, new ones come in, and we get actually repair and, and f feel great. And that can actually happen through our longer decades of life, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, no problem. We are designed to live a long time. But what I think, it's not anti-aging. I try to say, eh, no, it's we need to stop the accelerated aging, mm. and that's really what chronic disease is. It's it's an acceleration yeah. of the of the um, yeah, maybe aging we, process. We're supposed to live like I don't know, 120 years. Maybe well, I, I think the way. I don't think it would be hard by you know by any means. I mean, we've we've gotten into a society that it's going to take a lot of work, and I think the hardest thing for most patients that I work with is nothing is set up for success in our society, right? I mean, you go to the checkout store, why isn't there orga organic broccoli at the checkout <laughs> store, right? You know, so everything is geared toward, yeah. you know, addiction fueling that, consumerism, yeah, fueling and, yeah. the addiction, you know? Exactly. Which is great for, you know, profit lines uh, companies, but not so great for our bottom line health. But personal responsibility. So to really 
to really get better, it has to be, you know, the, our, our patients, you really got to want to do it. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, you got great doctors around who, who we specialize in this. And it's time tested, meaning when, it re- when you apply it and really apply it, it doesn't fail. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And is inflammation the root of all evil? Is Inflammation is the root of all evil. That, yeah, in, in a lot of respect it is because it's foundational to every chronic progressive disease. But so that's, that that's, yeah, the chronic inflammation. Inflammation mm-hmm. is actually a gift, like, oh. just like the stress response. Mm-hmm. We've demonized stress, but right. the stress response is actually a gift from evolution absolutely um, to you know give us superhuman strength to to lift the car off our child or Mm -hmm. fight the tiger or whatever we're doing Uh, the problem is when we become turn it into a chronic stress response Mm -hmm. which means it turns off our higher thinking centers our Mm -hmm. our digestion our immune system Um, and it's the same with inflammation inflammation is a brilliant way our intelligent bodies heal wounds Mm -hmm. and heal little imbalances in the body by pumping more blood there and oxygenation mm-hmm. and immune cells and everything. Uh, but when you're overwhelming the system, mm-hmm. then it just becomes like a forest fire. Then it becomes pathogenic and yeah. it creates even more inflammation. So go back to the, the you know, hitting the shin on the, on the coffee table is in an acute situation left alone and not no more stimulus of, of pain and destruction, it'll heal. And that's what acute inflammation is. And I cover that in my book as well. Is acute inflammation is needed. We have to. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you think about you cut your finger and a few days later it scabs over and a week later it's gone. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have to think about it. Yeah. You didn't have to call somebody. It just did its thing. Mm-hmm. And to, all you had to do was keep it clean. And just keep not it clean. And don't even, it, you know? don't even do that much. Yeah. You know, you get wash it easy by. You don't need to put a bunch of crazy stuff from the drugstore on it. The body will heal itself if given the opportunity. And I think, you know, the... Uh, the fascinating thing when we talk about chronic inflammation is, since it's foundational, is it the true causation? It, it's definitely part of the downhill spiral, mm-hmm. right? Meaning it, if there's no chronic inflammation, then, then the body is able to heal, mm-hmm. right? And I think, so when we're talking about gut, most patients have, I would say most patients with chronic progressive disease of any kind, you fill in the blank, have chronic uh, d- dysfunction in the gut, right? And that's one of the things that is almost never talked about. And when you see it on TV, we have laxatives to poop, which means what? You got constipation. Mm-hmm. There's the downhill side the, the, in the south, right? Down below. Mm-hmm. And then acid reflux, right? So then you're taking anti acids. Yeah. It's in the north. And then basically in the middle, there's not much there, but you know, the, as far as treatment goes, because it's all acute mm-hmm. symptomatology being treated chronically. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating because think of. Um, Acid reflux meds, right? PPIs. They're, when they start out, the protocol is about six to eight weeks max. I get patients who have been on PPIs for ten yeah. years. Well, that's what they're told. They're told that mm-hmm. you have an acid problem, and this is going to think. Ironically, m- using these meds for more than four to six weeks, your body adapts because we are intelligent, that's and right. then you it produces more acid because you have something that's like so it's yeah it's trying to compensate and i think you know the brilliance of the body so we call the innate wisdom you know you you uh, you can't outsmart it it's 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 brilliantly designed by nature to take care of us um you know and here we are kind of hopefully the tail end of the covid thing when you go back and you look at the patients that didn't do well on covid they had 2.6 comorbidities Right, so which means they either had obesity, cardiovascular, diabetes, or combination. Or one. So what does that mean? That basically means that an acute situation, and we see this every year with the flu. The flu comes in; it's an acute illness, but it damages the people with the most chronic disease the hardest. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and so that's a, a you know as crazy as this time has been. It's a it's a really wonderful exercise in how the body actually heals and when it's overwhelmed it really struggles to mm-hmm. to get get balanced and heal yeah oh my gosh um so recently a couple of friends my age even a little bit younger uh, i'm hearing this more and more common and i think we've been collectively in this very stressful time um to the point where people don't even again we've normalized but People aren't sleeping well. They call it like Corona somnia. Mm-hmm. Like there's just this underlying current of stress in the collective psyche. Mm-hmm. Um, and then something, you know, happens in our personal life. So a couple friends have had very stressful 
under this umbrella of just like a very stressful time in human history, mm -hmm. then they have like an acutely stressful event happen in their life or a, peri a period of a month or two. And a lot of them are uh, presenting with inflammation in their hands and feet, mm -hmm. which will then, I mean, these people are 30 something mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. They go to the doctor, the rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. they're diagnosed with the rheumatoid arthritis, put on methotrexate mm -hmm. or something crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it just, 2021, like a whole bunch of 30 year olds getting rheumatoid arthritis. It's like, that's not normal. No, people. that's not normal. What is happening? And like, how do we, you know, and then they're there, if you Google rheumatoid arthritis or the doctor, you know, these, these doctors are doing their job, they're, they're telling them that, you know, if they don't get ahead of it, it's going to advance really mm -hmm. quickly and you can't turn back mm -hmm. the clock. So mm -hmm. they're automatically fearful that right. they're, they have to do something extreme um, or they're going to face, you know, premature death or, you know, gnarled knuckles. Yeah, arthritic condition. Yeah. You know, and so well, like, uh, what, what, what is happening? Well, what's happening, one thing I'll address this is, is it's a fear-based uh, approach to healthcare as well, right? So if you don't take X medication, you're going to get this. And that's probably true if you don't do anything else to reverse the, the causation or the problem. So it's similar to like driving over the cliff. If you don't turn the wheel, you're going to go off the cliff. Yeah, well, that's what happens, right? The thing with the, the gut, though, if we go back to the gut, stress, downright. So let, let me break out the, the nervous system down for you real quick. There's two. You got the central nervous system, which basically controls our entire being. And then you have the sympathetic, which is the fight flight. And then you have the parasympathetic, which is the um, right? The, the heal, the rest the, and repair. Um, the yeah. heal, rest and repair, and digestion. Yeah. So rest and digest. Rest and digest. And so when we go into a stressful mode, and remember, we've had this 24 7 during this whole crazy yeah. time, right? This whole pandemic. I mean, they just hammer you on the news everywhere you go. It's very, very stressful. And they don't, uh, you know, there's no time to even think logically sometimes. So as we get shoved into this fight flight response, remember both parts of the nervous system can't be on at the same time. Mm -hmm. It really is one Mutually or the other. Yeah, explicit. so the sympathetic fight fight will downregulate that parasympathetic rest, digest, and heal. And so it's no wonder that people will get type of conditions. Now, um, fascinating for the rheumatoid is that's going to be gut, always, joint, arthritic. All the arth arthritides are going to be based in the, in, the, in the gut. So it's a fascinating thing. Skin conditions, joint arthritides, this is leaking into the, to the body. It's depositing into joints. The joints inflame. And then we're looking at the distal end of the, the condition. It's like, oh, my God, your hands are blah, blah, blah. But we're not going back and looking at to where it's going. How did it get in your finger? Yeah. Unless you got run over by a car on that finger, it's yeah. coming from somewhere else. Yeah. And that's where the, the down regulation of the parasympathetics. And remember, we're, we're still eating, right? And the thing that really happens is as we get stressed, we then go to things that stimulate more stress in our body, right? Mm -hmm. We go to coffee and sugars and comfort, you know, foods, comfort and, foods. Or and, we eat really fast or, or we we're stepping fast. down our emotions. <clears throat> right. No... And now we've actually you got a nervous system that takes care of all that turned off and we're just loading, mm -hmm. loading it up day shin. after day. Shin. Yeah, shin shin, 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 shin. There you go. Exactly. Every three, four hours, right? Snacks. I mean, every single thing we're eating contributes to the to the dysbiosis or the, or the um, uh, digestional dysfunction that's going on. That's why I say if, if you've got a chronic disease and it really doesn't matter what it is, there's a good chance you have dysbiosis or gut damage. So when we talk about leaky gut, which is actually uh, increased intestinal permeability, right? So our, our body has a beautiful way, our, our intestinal lining has a beautiful filter system to let the good things in and keep the bad things out. Stress, if we're running at stress and we're downregulating that, that operating system for the gut, we get damage to the lining of the, the whole intestinal, the that, it's that protective whole intestinal barrier. tract, that yes. protective barrier. Thank you. And so what really happens then is it is the gaps between those. One, the mucus that catches bad things is, is less. The gaps start to increase and many things pour into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Well, the body has a, a wonderful way of trying to excrete it. Right? We're going to go through either 
uh, fecal route poop. Yeah, they wanted it. They wanted it to go through the it, fecal route. Exactly, and it's, but now and it's now in my blood. Leaking into so your bloodstream. Do, right. Exactly. So skin is really, and remember, the biggest organ in the body is the skin. So all skin conditions, arthritis, they're going to have a gut correlation. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's causation or secondary, to me, it really doesn't matter because we're going to fix the whole patient. Yeah. We have to fix the whole patient. In Which order is why to better. these autoimmune conditions, you know, are so hard to diagnose because they're presenting with yep. arthritic symptoms, mm-hmm. ex- psoriasis, eczema, mm-hmm. all the whole host, fatigue, chronic mm-hmm. fatigue, joint pain. Lo- I mean, so it's like, what is it? Is it chronic fatigue? Is it lupus? Is it right. fibromyalgia? Is it rheumatoid arthritis? They're all kind of, it just kind of depends on which yeah, the, 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 yeah, exactly, and that's it. And so the answer is yes. <laughs> it's yes, it's all the above. Because, you know, again, conditions manifest in the body as dysfunction, right? We, we've developed an industry which is profitable on calling it something. Here's the diagnosis. Here's the code. You know, here's the money stream to treat it. It's always the same money stream. It's drugs, typically. Or if it gets really bad, it's going to be a procedure. Mm-hmm. But then what? Right? So, again, if the patient then goes home and rams his, his or her leg on the coffee table yeah. every day, then we have made no change at all. Yeah. So it's disease management rather than health Absolutely, care. yeah. Care Absolutely. to be healthy. Um, that said, mm-hmm. we're not anti-medication. No, there, no, there definitely not. There are times where people, someone has gone through severe trauma or stress or has some sort of imbalance and they they may need a chemical intervention Mm -hmm. to get them over the hump sure um and 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 some people need to be on medication perhaps for the rest of their life Mm -hmm. like diabetes type 1 or severe depression or Mm -hmm. you know some sort of mental health disorder however with lifestyle medicine you've been able to improve and then get gotten some of those people off medication is that correct yeah absolutely Or, or dramatically reduce the medication as well because look there there really isn't medication that fixes things, right? It doesn't cure really anything. So the medications are uh, appropriate in acute situations, right? But again, when you go back to the PPIs, if if you're supposed to be on those six to eight weeks and you're on them 10 to 12 years later, then we've missed something in our intervention to help help patients. And it goes back to the gut. So a big thing about the gut is, you know, 70 to 80% of our immune system cells, you know, originate in the gut. They're uh, it's very, very important because it's the really the only open system of the body, right? The open at the end or top of, in the mouth and open at the bottom in the anus. So the environment, things in the environment are put into our body. So our immune system has to be strong in the gut. Mm-hmm. And so as we downregulate it, as we get more damage, as we get more inflammation going on, the body, the gut itself is trying to repair itself mm-hmm. and has a hard time repairing the rest of the body as well. How do the microbiota, uh, what what are the bugs, the the good bacteria, bad bacteria balance? I mean, that's Mm -hmm. also, so we're not only damaging the lining of our wall or the enteric nervous system, Mm -hmm. that that shield, if you will, but we're also killing off the good bacteria that keep everything in balance and actually feed you know everything and, and and basically it those good ba- the good bacteria actually have sequencing and i talk about this in my book about short chain fatty acids that are developed in the broken down in the body about it in the gut and they help repair our cells and so the fascinating thing that i love about the good bacteria is that as they as you start to feed the good bacteria and this is through diet and lifestyle mm-hmm. they actually grow and they push out the bad bacteria Right? There, there is a war going on down there. Yeah. And when people have chronic dysbiosis, that means the bad guys are winning. Yeah. Right? And that's where the, the balance good, is tipped the balance in the direction is tipped. of the bad guys. Yeah. Exactly. And so, unfortunately, what happens is there's a lot of you know met- metabolism that occurs during the war as well, right? Mm-hmm. Good bacteria. But so the body's in a, in a fight. We want the microbiome to be more balanced, of course. Remember, there's microbiome on our skin, right, and our, all throughout our bloodstream. We are basically a living being, so the microbiome is is all over. It's everywhere, yeah. right? And the gut's very, very important because we've just invented so many things, including stress, right? We've got stress on 24-7 to just kill off those bad bugs. Uh, excuse me, kill the off the bugs. good bugs. And 
that is a perfect environment for the bad bugs to occur. And then what happens is we, you know, the bad bugs take over and make it comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to actually have, they're not worried about you healing, they're worried about proliferating. Mm-hmm. So uh, constipation is another good example of what happens when we get a dysbiosis going on. We can't eliminate a lot of the toxic um, stuff in our poop, right? And so then we have reabsorbed that. Mm-hmm. Not only does it feed the bad bacteria, because that's ideally what they want. They want a bunch of not good stuff, but we reabsorb it through the bloodstream, which will then do what? Create the, elicit the chronic inflammatory response, and right, our joints hurt, yeah. we get headaches, we don't sleep, et cetera, because we're being bathed in our own uh, toxicity. Yeah. And if you are on, say, medication for 15 years or five years, you know, like Eva in the film, she's been on mm-hmm. steroids for five, eight years, that's killing off the good a side effect of medication of any sort of chemical intervention is killing the good bacteria, which is why probiotics are fantastic if they're mm-hmm. of high quality, but they're not enough. You got to stop banging right. your shin, and you got to take the keep the balance. You know, you got to be proactive. As and well. I'm glad you brought that up. So probiotics are, are definitely helpful, especially in an acute situation. You know, anybody who's been traveling and gotten you know Montezuma's revenge or <laughs> you know loose stools. Probiotics are great, but remember, that's the end stage of the good bacteria. Our, our gut, through prebiotic foods, makes our own good bacteria, right? Mm-hmm. So it's actually, we, we basically flourish our own probiotic good bacteria if we're eating the right precursors. If you take a probiotic in an acute situation, I'm all for it. But patients who've been on it for years and years and years, you're eating the end product, which means as soon as you eat it, it goes down there, there it is, and if you've got a bad bacteria uh, um, balance problem, the probiotics aren't going to actually win the battle. Got it. You have you to build. feed the army that's in there. You have to build. It. So fiber it's where it's all out. Resistant starches, right? And, and so there's insoluble and soluble fibers. Very, very important for the body. Um, the insoluble fibers, fi- uh, f- fibers like our bulk, right? Our, our grains and stuff that's going to again sh- slide through and really just mechanically help remove uh, t- um, toxicity through poop. But in, uh, the soluble fibers are the resistant starches. And why I bring this up now is this is something we're really focusing on a lot in the research as well. Those are the, you know, our legumes and our, you know, grains and things that really break down. So as our body, we call them resistant starches because as the body breaks them down, it can't break them down fully, which means the good bacteria in our gut goes to work. And by breaking down the rest of the resistant starches, it liberates a food supply for the good bacteria. Mm. And the bad bacteria gets squashed out because they don't feed on the same um, fiber. So if you go back and, and look at most patients and or most people in the Western diet are eating about 13 grams of fiber a day. 13. Sounds like a lot. We need about 30 to 40 grams mm. daily, every day. So if you think you run, say, 10 to 13 grams of fiber a day, you're about 20 grams deficient for years and weeks on end. Yeah. And you get chronic dysbiosis and those bad bacteria guys are going. And, you know, your friends, 30, 40, right? This is about when things start showing up. So there's more than likely there was some dysbiosis going on. And this is a a question I get a lot as patients. Well, when did this really start? And I said, look, this has been going a long time. Mm -hmm. But maybe this acute event coupled with this crazy panic of the pandemic and and the fear and the stress that's out in the collective um, really just accelerated it yeah. to a point of, you know, expression. It's called the tipping point mm. is what I call it. Yeah. So the tipping point, or firefighters will know it as the flashpoint, right? When a room gets so hot, it is, it's not even, it's just smoking right mm-hmm. now. And at one moment, bam, Boom. It's a, and that's a lot with chronic progressive disease. So what are you seeing, because I feel like the tipping point now for, for youth, um, you know, suicide, mm. depression, anxiety is like gangbusters mm-hmm. right now, which is devastating. It's it's affecting so many adolescents especially because, I mean, thinking back to my childhood, however, 35 years ago or 30, 30 years ago, I'm 42, um, you know, we didn't have social media. Mm-hmm. We just had normal adolescent, good old high school drama and mm-hmm. hormones and, mm-hmm. you know, thinking the world was going to end if this – boy didn't like me or whatever it was. So now we have this comparison in this 24 seven news Mm -hmm. cycle, which Mm -hmm. is mostly negative and um, violent. And 
I mean, these kids, and then the comparison and the likes or dislikes of social media, mm -hmm. it's too much, then coupled with, you know, maybe poor diet because teenagers tend to eat poor diet, mm -hmm. as I did. I'm shocked that I'm so healthy today based on what I grew up on. But um, what do you, can you talk a little bit about the gut health connection to brain? Absolutely. And what's going on right now? It, it really start. you know, the fascinating thing is teenagers, we see teenagers manifesting a bunch of, uh, usually a, a puberty will always, in a you know, pu puberty is kind of a crazy trip anyway, right? Yeah. But it's heavy on its own, right? It's heavy on its own, even if you're pretty balanced. But we're looking at generations now that literally have been raised on infant formula. A lot of them are cesarean. So if you go back to microbiome, where does the microbiome truly start? Well, number one, it really helps with the mo mother's nutrition. But number two, vaginal birth. You know, as we come out the canal and we get scraped, you know, in the mm -hmm. canal, that's basically where we start our microbiota, our good mi microbiota. And that helps start good um, gut functionality flora. And, yeah. and flora and et cetera. And now, we go with real crappy, highly processed, you know, with a lot of things have GMO you know, infant formula does, and you get, you know, the usual Western diet. So a kid is 10, and that seems young, but the kid's been on a really toxic diet for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So if you do anything for a decade, you're going to have yeah. symptomatology, right? And then, you know, puberty kicks in, yeah. hormones change. But here's the problem. With a lot of these kids, they never got the enteric nervous system balanced enough, which is the enteric nervous system is that nervous system of the gut-brain connection. So if it never got to flourish, if it was never a healthy um, gut from the start, then anxiety, depression, all of these are actually, we won't say normal, but they're common sequelae to what's going on yeah, in the dysbiosis. They're less resilient in their literal protective lining of their gut. They're Absolutely. Less, their immune system is their protector, and because it wasn't able to develop as nature intended or as, right. as resilient, it's there, it's, and it has it will have the opportunity if given the right support, but, you know, this is why it's a much greater conversation than, you know, it's so good to be aware, mm -hmm. but then, you know, so many people in lower economic status yeah. don't have access to whole foods. No, and, well, by design, yeah. It's, and they're it's, stressed it's because they're... In, under the poverty line. Mm -hmm. So there's all, I mean, it's like such a big conversation, mm -hmm. but it's so good for, to be aware of because mm -hmm. if you see a sensitive teenager, whether you're in the inner city or in Beverly Hills, you realize that it, it could be as simple as a gut dysbiosis. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, there's, and there, a, there is a connection. And unhealthy microbiome and, and immune system. And, and can you, if they didn't, if they didn't, um, if they weren't given the opportunity to have a resilient enteric mm -hmm. nervous system, mm -hmm. can you fix that going forward if you start to kind of treat it? Well, I, I think so. And I think that's why, you know, a big push for those of us in lifestyle medicine is is to go downward to the young, to the youth, to get mm -hmm. the kids eating better. And sometimes it's a generational gap. Like sometimes the parents won't, don't want to eat better, right? Well, try to educate the kids to a lot of their problems are literally just manifestation of, of the dysbiosis or dysfunction going on in their body. And we know as kids, as little ones, how do they act out? They cry and they, they can't tell you what's going on. And I believe a lot of the adolescents and even the teenagers can't really verbally tell you that they're struggling, but they are, right? They're having this pretty systemic dysfunction. And so some of the, the journals, uh, are, are we got autism, you know, ADHD, we got all these addictive behaviors, you know, compulsive uh, OCD, OCD yeah. disorders. These are all starting to show fruition of, oh man, this is a really a gut related issue, mm -hmm. right? And if you think about when you're when you're nervous, right? When you think mm -hmm. of any butterflies you know, or you've got a test and you're what are you doing? You're stressing. Mm -hmm. You're not balanced, right? So if these kids are in kids or even young adults are in this environment all the time, then they basically are regressing mm -hmm. their ability to heal and grow mm -hmm. and regenerate. Yeah. And heal, right? There's a lot of stress happening. There is a lot of stress. Generation. You know, I mean, social media is a classic brutal. example. You know, it is. It's brutal. You know, and, you know, kids are mean. I, it's a funny thing. We always had mean kids when we were little, blah, et cetera. But it, it's gotten to just such a heightened 24-7 mm -hmm. type of speed. It's just too bad. But, you know, I will say to the parents out there, look, you do control. You have a lot of control still on things. So turn things off. There's nothing in social media that's 
going to be that important, you know. A little bit here and there is fine, but again, it's similar to drunk junk food or you yeah. know, as we I get asked about alcohol a lot or chocolate. Again, it's once in a while is no big deal. And I in the biggest thing for most of our patients is I call it going to Vegas, right? So they always ask me, we get going on things, and they're like, well, when can I have X, right? Yeah. And X is, you know, inflammatory. Yeah, right? or, <laughs> or worse. French fries. Or, yeah, exactly, oh, yeah. or worse. And I say, look, here's the deal. If you have chronic progressive disease or the manifestation of the symptomatology, meaning you might even be early in it, then you really have to go about it in an aggressive way, focused way, and allow the body super to clean, heal. Super clean, super rigid. Super clean, yeah, well, super rigid is, yeah, for the most part. I guess it would be rigid for a lot of people's yeah. psyches, but <laughs> you got to clean it up. But guess what? Once you're cleaned up, then you can do something. That's why I call it going to Vegas. So yeah. if you go to Vegas, remember, you go to Vegas, and you just get, you know, you get railed, right? You get railed for the weekend, <laughs> right? You, Monday morning, you're going back to work, and you're like, holy cow, that was Fun, I guess, you know. But if you went to Vegas every weekend, right, oh, yeah. month after month after yeah. month, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And I think that's the thing. It's We always look for the, you know, I get a lot of questions of which is the worst food. And it's like it just doesn't work that way. It's a cumulative thing. And you, you led this this conversation off in accumulation. It's a cum- Life is cumulative, mm-hmm. right? But you can always heal. Yeah. And that's the big thing. So I get patients in their 70s on our programs that have told me, Man, 50 years of this and it's gone. Right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you you got to have the belief system in the, in yeah. the human body. It will heal. It's yeah. You said this beautiful line in heal where um, you said something like the body heals way faster than it took to get to yep. the disease. So, like a disease could take 20, 10, 20 years, 30 mm-hmm. years to to accumulate enough. I mean, that's how resilient the human body is, mm-hmm. even when we have come. You know, so so back to the question of because I don't want anyone to feel um, kind of, there's no judgment about if someone had to have a cesarean section. Oh, no, 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 no. A, a lot of people elect them for cosmetic reasons or f- easy, you mm-hmm. know, f- whatever. But there's, again, there's no judgment, but that's just the trend. I mean, mm-hmm. there was in the 50s, like, they would put the mothers out and, like, vacuuming the baby out of the thing. Yep. So there's been a lot of, like, <laughs> interesting, yep. you know, things that may have had some health issues in the past. But um, for someone that has... Um, had had to or elected to have their child via cesarean mm-hmm. section, um, so they didn't get that natural microbiome through the vaginal opening. Um, how do you? It's possible to rebuild that. The absolutely, gut. absolutely. So it's, it's, it's the same to, way we would b- rebuild a forty or fifty year old. Because the hard you know? the hardware is there. The hardware is you there. You didn't get that microbiome software on the way out of the the right exactly. The vagina. Yeah, yeah. But um, so so. I don't know. Give us a... No, and, and you bring up a very valid point and, a, and an important point when I talk to patients. A lot of patients feel like they've done something wrong, right? Well, oftentimes I have to tell them, well, that's, that's the medical intervention you had. It really wasn't your fault. It's not your fault you had to have X, Y, and Z. But the most important... So, so don't spend time on it, right? Move forward. Yeah. The most important thing is it can heal. And you've seen some trauma, traumatic... Oh, sorry. You've seen some dramatic cases of healing, you know, whether it be spontaneous healing or over time. And so I think once you truly believe and understand that your body can heal, regardless of what's happened to it, let's say you didn't get what you needed when you were one or two, you, your body can heal given the, the appropriate, um, really the appropriate diet and lifestyle. That's a lot of it. So I think that's a very good question, actually. I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of guilt with patients, especially moms. Mm -hmm. And we spend a lot of time with our patients, you know, about that. Maybe they couldn't breastfeed and maybe they couldn't do this or the other thing. There's always ways to make the body and the baby and the, you know, grow and to be healthy people. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you look at the worst scenarios, I mean, I have patients that, and we look at timeline when, when when I was saying it takes a lot longer to get the disease than it does to reverse the disease. We, I have advanced cardiovascular patients that within a year, their arteries are cleaned out of their heart, their coronary arteries are clean when we go in and do an angiogram. So wow. same thing occurs with diabetes type two. You know, we can get a diabetes type two in six to 12 months fully resolved, right? Mm. But that takes the time. Yeah. You know, it takes commitment. the time and the commitment. Yeah, yeah exactly. But again, for, for kids as well, I think, you know, our food program's a disaster. You know, we tried to get a food program going several years ago. That didn't work out, you know, in schools. Yeah. But it, again, it's going to have to be a parent 
the parents are going to have to get educated. That's why there hopefully there's a lot of resources out there. And get educated to raise your, your kid in a healthy environment. Yeah, you know? in the My, best way you can. In the best with, way you can. With the yeah. awareness. Yeah. yeah, with the awareness. And I think yeah. that's it. It's the awareness. My yeah. parents had no awareness that, you know, giving me Kraft macaroni and cheese right, and right. ordering Domino's <laughs> pizza. I was a picky eater, you know what I mean? Like... That orange packet. It's like, but I'm telling you, I was ra- I was a picky eater. Yeah. Nothing yeah. green. Mm-hmm. And this is no joke, people. Nothing green passed my lips until I woke up my sophomore year in college, junior year. Actually, I was I was studying abroad. I looked at a photo of myself. I had gained like 15 pounds, but more than that, I was like puffy and red and just looked so unhealthy. Mm-hmm. I did not eat a vegetable, maybe a salad in, mm-hmm. in my first couple years in college, with ranch dressing. Um, but I was raised on bread. Red meat, cheese, and and you know whatever I and peanut butter, mm-hmm. and I am so healthy, and I'm probably, you know, I changed that when I was like 21. Mm-hmm. I started to eat clean and have a little bit more awareness, and then 28, I took an integrative nutrition program. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, if if my gut and innards can heal, yeah, like absolutely. after 21 <laughs> years of really really feeding it nothing but crap and I think I got away with a lot because I was an athlete I played Mm -hmm. sports year-round and I was you know getting rid of a lot of toxins via sweat or whatever but uh, and burning a lot of those calories out of my system but the nutrition wasn't there and and I'm very healthy today so I think that there's always hope for making new lifestyle changes and and like you said you can heal way faster than then. Yeah, you can. And that, that's the most important thing for parents to know and then even people for, with their own self, you know, their personal health. We, The ability to heal, it happens in a matter of moments, right? Again, going back to the shin on the thing, just don't hit your shin again for a while. Mm-hmm. Eh, go to Vegas and hit it on down the road. But <laughs> for now, get busy and allow the body to heal. And that's, I think, the beauty is. The hardest part is people following, like, the protocols and I should eat this and shouldn't eat that and or, you know, I got to start walking now. I never liked walking, et cetera. But once you do it, it becomes mm-hmm. second nature. Yeah. And then all the things, all the benefits start paying off really, yeah. really fast. And also you start to feel better and you're woken up of that trance mm-hmm. of normalized feeling like crap, which is right. we're all walking in this, like, baseline level of, like, oh, you know, my nose runs after I eat or I have a right. headache or I'm, right. I'm, I'm fatigued at 3 p.m. every day after, you know. So, like... We've accepted the things are normal, but that's so. Once you start making lifestyle changes and working out more, and then the endorphins are released more, and then you're eating healthier, so you have more energy. You're like, oh, and then you you're not you're breaking that habit of craving the bad stuff because now your gut health is a lot more balanced, and right. so the good bacteria are actually craving the good stuff, the fiber, right. the whole foods. Right. So it's it's subtle, but it kind of resolves itself if you can just commit long enough to get over that initial really uncomfortable period well and i do talk in my book i talk about the food addictions and cravings which is probably the number one hurdle for for patients to like anybody can i find most people can start something for you know four or five weeks but how do you get through three four months when those food addiction and cravings are kicking in and you know we have techniques in our protocols in our program to do that but it again the further you get away from the cleaner your body becomes. Palate adaptation occurs. That can occur anywhere from two weeks to six weeks, mm-hmm. right? So your whole palate will change over. Your taste buds will change over. And so the things that you thought were really, ugh, they're like, ah, oh, this is actually yeah. really good. I think also when you go in, really the protocols are, are whole foods. It's, it's all about nothing, you know, cute marketing, nothing packaged. It's like whole foods, like how nature, <laughs> nature made food, how, yeah. how food is grown. Our taste buds are actually wired for that. So... When I break it down in my book, think of think of uh, sugar, uh, fat, and salt, right? So I call those the trifecta, the SOS diet, sugar, oil, and salt. And it's in every processed food because that's how the manufacturer gets you to come back to their brand, right? The, the, remember the orange chemical packet and the macaroni and cheese, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, all, the, all those <laughs> are designed. powdered cheese that, that powdered so cheese. Good. <laughs> those are all designed to have an effect on the brain, on the taste buds, etc. And so when you look at nature, nature never puts those three together, right? So if you look at an avocado, an avocado's fat has fat in it, but it's not sweet. An apple is sweet, but not fat. And so we have balance going on. So the dopamine receptor in the brain stays pretty balanced and harmonic. And now all those foods I just mentioned go down and help correct the dysbiosis. Mm. See, there was a diabolical plan to nature. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so then as you start to eat these more and more, 
the dysbiosis goes away, your taste buds go away, that dopamine switch, that fight flight response. And I, I you know, I love the Joe Pesci Snickers commercial, right? That is, remember that commercial? They're the best, that's the best food addiction commercial I've ever seen. And I don't know if Snickers was like, did they figure that out? Because he, you know, Joe Pesci's ready to fight someone, blah, blah, blah. And someone says, oh, here, have a, you need a Snickers bar. He takes a big old bite of the Snickers bar. And then what? He's all mellow. And he yeah. turns into another guy. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Food addiction, right? <laughs> and we could do it with smoke or cigarette. You know, there's all sorts of things. But what it is, is it's chemical mediation that hijacks our brain. Mm. So for us to get to more of a balanced state till we can heal, we got to stop going into that real excited um, state. Which comes with every packaged food. So. Every packaged so. food. Yeah, it's designed, yeah. you know? I mean, remember, products and food aren't, aren't the same, in my opinion. So food is food. Food is something that has grown, right? Products are something we make mm. and patent and box and, right? So if our diet is loaded with products, then we're not eating food. Mm -hmm. And we're designed for food. Mm -hmm. The gut dysbiosis you fix with what? Food. Okay. Right? We've got to remove a lot of the chemicals, the toxins, and things like that, which is kind of self-evident. But it, the beauty is, is it does it all itself again. You know, That's what I always hammer home with my patients. They're like, well, how do I do that? Don't worry. Just follow this. We'll come. You know, and I, I think support's important, too. You know, I talk once a week with my patients. Yeah. You know, and that's important because um, there's going to be times in healing, too. Like, I always joke with the patients, but I'm, I'm serious, too. The, the healing's not for the weak, mm -hmm. right? You're going to go through yeah. healing events. Healing crisis is another term that, that we've used in that. And meaning it's, you know, when you when you kind of clean the house, yeah. it's it's dirty and, and kind of not, not most fire. fun. It's, yeah. yeah. But on the other side, which isn't too far away, then it gets easier and easier yeah. and easier. And it's know? worth it. Always worth it. Always worth it. Yeah, always worth it. And do you, I know you do like full panel of blood labs mm -hmm. with your clients to see what's really going on in the, in, you know, under the skin, under the surface, yeah. under the hood. Um, are you noticing any trends? This will be my last specific question, but just back to that depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. OCD, ADHD. Are you noticing any trends with mineral deficiencies like magnesium or do you go there or is it you're no, just I, dealing with whole foods? I do, but... Really, the, um, and this would be helpful for other physicians getting, getting into this work, the inflammatory markers tell a huge story, right? C-reactive protein, right? Sed rate. Uh, these, these, are, these are markers that are standard that, that most doctors order on a regular basis. And I think the point for docs is to pay attention to how elevated they are, right? So oftentimes, we, we, in practice, we wait for the red flag. But if 10, if the range is 0 to 10 and you're at 10, that's considered, quote, normal. Well, yeah, how much wiggle room do you have to become a red flag? Not very Point much. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So I think it's important to look at a CBC panel and a comp metabolic panel are really, really good. We can do some advanced, which I do. I do a lot of advanced um, testing as well. But a lot of stuff will show up in just our basic CBC do, or, or um, white blood cell count, WBC. It's almost always elevated with people with di uh, dysbiosis. Mm -hmm. So there's an indicator, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, you're not chronically sick with something really gnarly, but you're you have on the precipice. You're on, yeah, you're on track for yeah. it, right? And so those are very, very important parts of the blood. And the reason why the blood is important more than stool and more than urine is your blood never lies, right? It will always tell you what's going on because it's an immune system cell, right? Your immune system cells resonate in your bloodstream, mm -hmm. right? That's where they are. So when we draw on and pull it, we can see exactly what's going on immunity-wise. Then we can uh, order more advanced tests if we need, right? You got to be careful though, because it's all in how you look at things, right? So it's important to. I think the most important thing is if a patient is a, a patient. I was told this in school years ago. A patient will tell you, tell you what's wrong with them, and that's really true. So when we start, you know, when they start telling you, yeah. you know, I haven't, I've been tired for you know 10, 15 years, and I, my poop is bad, mama. Now you can start narrowing things mm -hmm. in, then match it with blood labs. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I got what's going on. And do you, um, wrapping up here, do you, do you deal with the emotional as well, or do you say... Absolutely. Like, and that's where the conversations come in weekly, because the, 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 you know, be careful what you ask for, right? So when you start working with patients, especially with a lot of gut dysfunction, emotional 
um, traumas and emotional instabilities come out. And it's not who they are. It's literally just a symptom of their dis mm-hmm. dysfunction and dysbiosis. And we have conversations about that. Because the sad part is we have labeled so many patients to something when it's nothing more than a symptom of distress, yeah. Yeah. right? Like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm manic, I'm this, I'm that. No, you're not. I mean, mm-hmm. you have the symptomatology, but that's not you, right? And so we ha- I try to bring patients back to, don't believe that. You know, Deepak always said, yeah. Yeah, you believe the diagnosis, not yeah. the prognosis. It's spot on. Yeah. Right? So, you know, if you really want it, and I think this is the biggie for every patient out there, you really got to want it. You really got to want to heal. You know, and I, so I always used to tell my kids when they were little, I said, you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl today? And they'd be like, oh, you know, Dallas or whoever. And I'd say, they're like, who do you think? I said, the team that wants it the most. Mm -hmm. And that's always what happens in the Super Bowl. (laughs) So it's a good life lesson. Patients got to believe to heal. But oftentimes when they're coming out of chronic disease management, they're never told there's a possibility to get Mm -hmm. better. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'll have to be on this medication for the rest of your life. Oh, you'll have to be in that. Yeah. And given if you don't do anything else, that's probably true. But there are other avenues. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, so where can people find you in your book, The uh, Healing well, my, Protocols? Yep. My book is um, on Amazon. It's in print and digital format. It's also on iTunes. And then uh, my website, docemerson.com. Uh, um, you can go there and take a look at my stuff yeah see the programs yes yeah, these programs and, yeah you know and more information amazing well yeah anyone curious um pick up the healing protocols and thank you so much for sharing your, You're very your wisdom and being there for so many of my friends that go to you and um thank you it's it's uh, it's a, it's a pleasure it's there's nothing more gratifying in my opinion for any doctor to see patients get better yeah you know and that's something that you see that's something I see in my practice. I have the luxury, thank God. You know, appreciate it. You know, it's what, it's uh, believe in it. It'll happen. Yeah. You know. Believe, want it, commit. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gorris. Thank you so much and be well.